Hello there. Recently I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube and I came across all these um, best to worst and worst to best sort of album reviews and kind of things, uh, you know, um, from basically just fans when they talk about um, the bands they love. Um, and one of the bands I love is KISS. Um, I was born in 67, first time I became aware of KISS was in 76 when I was nine years old when Destroyer came out, the, the first KISS album I've ever owned was um, Love Gun, I was 10 then and it was interesting because my auntie who lives in the States sent this to me in, uh, sent this to me to Germany uh, and it had the original logo, this one, um, on the cover and at that time in Germany the the SS kind of thing um, was uh, banned in Germany so the, the KISS albums had a different SS that looked a bit like a five kind of thing a uh, bit, bit weird looking anyway so I remember having that album there and if I remember correctly there was a a love gun in it that you could sort of you know glue together or something so um, I basically virtually grew up with KISS and I thought, you know, based on my taste, um, I'm going to run down the albums and uh, from, from, from worst to best. And on my list, the worst album Kiss has ever done is Carnival of Souls. Um, I don't get the album at all. Um, doesn't do a thing for me. It was like they were trying to be a different band um, altogether. Um, somehow there's not one song that I find memorable on the album. Uh, and by the way, on this um, countdown here to number one, um, all 1978 um, solo albums of Peter, Paul, Gene and Ace will be um, included because remember they were still Kiss then, <laughs> so they sort of count. Um, exclusive obviously is everything after Monster. Right, um, which leads us to the second worst album, which is, in my opinion, Monster. It's actually not a bad album, but I find it much worse than, let's say, Sonic Boom is. Um, and the reason I find it is not great is because it sounds a bit dated. And it sounds very 70-ish recording, and it felt to me that it's sort of a an idea of relive the 70s with new songs. Um, obviously I could be wrong, <laughs> but this, the album Monster just didn't do and doesn't do anything for me. Then um, on number 22, here comes the first solo album. And the solo album of all the four, and uh, my number 22 here, um, that I like the least, is Peter Chris's. And has uh, a lot to do with the style of music that is on it. Um, there's no doubt about it, uh, Peter Griss has a really, really great voice. Um, and I personally think that uh, smaller things, uh, so, so slower things like Heart Luck like Woman and um, Beth suit his voice quite well. So um, him doing an album um, that was on a whole slower or slowish wasn't a bad move. It showcased his voice, but in the context of Kiss, it just doesn't fit in and um, again there isn't that much on it um, that is memorable. So of all the four solo albums um, his is the, the, the one I like least. It's my number 22 and then number 21 is actually Kiss's 2009 record Sonic Boom. And I have to say this because this sounds a bit weird now we're actually beginning to go into the good albums because there isn't much I don't like about um, Kiss albums as it were um, but you know when you do from worst to best it's, it's about what uh, what I listen to and Sonic Boom um, even though good songs at times uh, again to me I let's put it this way I think on the long run um, the, the latest KISS records just didn't capture what they once were. And I know there were tons of incarnations, so to speak, 
of, of KISS, and I actually have to say, and I know uh, a lot of fans will disagree, um, I think their best lineup was actually Bruce Kulik, Eric Carr, Paul and Gene. Simply because in the 80s, when they took their makeup off, they had something to prove. I've, and, and, and somehow it was all about the music and less about the theatrics. Um, so, um, but we're getting to this later. So, so Sonic Boom is not an album that I play a lot, that I necessarily like a lot. I remember when it came out, it came with a video and some re-recorded songs um, famous songs, you know, like like I was made for loving you and stuff. And um, again, um, the first thing was for me when I listened to it, it was like, why? <laughs> you know, they, they are great songs, leave them alone. Um, so, you know, and then, like I said, the, the album Sonic Boom um, isn't that great. What I like about it is songs like Sonic Boom, where um, Paul Stanley's voice is actually spot on really great um personally and this debate has gone on for years um you know the, the latest sort of last videos that i saw of, of them you know over the last couple of years um paul stanley's voice really is really bad um and even though his solo album live to win was quite great quite good i found um i hope that kiss aren't recording a new album um with paul's voice being so bad because you know they have a great legacy that they that they left for us, and um, there was a part of me that that wishes there there is no new Kiss material, simply because it doesn't doesn't sit right with me, um, and I don't think they're in it for the music any longer, right? Okay, so don't want to be too negative, but Sonic Boom is on number twenty one, and um, my number twenty, and that may be a surprise to many, is actually one of their earlier albums, Dressed to Kill. Um, the reason why it is on 20 and why I'm not listening to it that much is simply because of the recording technology um, as it was in the 70s when I play it. Um, I usually play it on, on a CD, so, you know, remastered and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't quite um, sound all that great. So Dress to Kill is probably my least favorite Kiss album with regards to the original four members, and it is um, number 20. Number 19 is um, Psycho Circus. I know I saw Kiss um, in 84, uh, 96, 99, and 2010, um, and obviously I, I loved them when they, when, they, when they reunited and played with, you know, with full makeup and the full bombastic show was absolutely amazing. But Psycho Circus as an album wasn't that great and also you know just like in many other albums um uh, and this is unfortunately uh, part of the history so to speak um apparently nobody's quite sure if it's really all peter and and ace on it um but that aside you know i suppose stanley sometimes says um if it if it sounds like kiss it is kiss kind of thing um psycho circus i i didn't think was that great um, I liked the tour that they did when they did these 3D things, you know. Um, but um, the, the album itself, um, I didn't like all that much. Right, so, and then um, on 18, we have Ace Frehley's solo album. And um, like I said earlier, already we are in the range of actually good albums and they get progressively better as we come along. Um, so Ace Freely solo album is um, uh, on, on 18. Um, I think it's quite a good album. I think the reason why it is lower than, let's say, Paul's and Gene's is because, on a whole, I don't think he's a great vocalist. <laughs> no offense. Um, but I never really liked his voice. I think he's a, probably one of the best guitarists out there. And, um, but some of the songs that he sang on different albums just, you know, it's not a rock voice. And when I listen to Kiss, I want him to rock. <laughs> and his voice just doesn't. And I think it's sort of reflected um, sonically on his solo album. Um, you know, obviously, um, I know it's the best selling of the four. And, uh, you know, New York Groove was, 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 was a massive song and um, love it, really. Um, but on a whole... Not a big fan of his voice and not a big fan of his solo work and 
even though um, it was in within KISS, um, not a big fan. So that's why it is at number uh, 18. On number 17, it's Revenge, the first album after um, Eric Carr's passing. There are really great songs on Revenge, and it is quite, um, well, I wouldn't say it's dark, but it is quite, it's rock. It's really quite raw, which I like about the album, but I don't think the compositions as such um, for me, didn't didn't quite didn't quite uh, do it. So so I don't like revenge all that much. Um, and here is the first surprise, maybe on number sixteen, which means above revenge. I actually think um, the next album that goes here is actually music from the elder. Um, <laughs> I know it's too much for some. I also know that when I listen to it these days, um, I have to exclude anything else that Kiss ever did, if that makes sense, because if you compare it to their work, it is very, very different and maybe doesn't quite uh, hold up all that well. What I like about it is um, that they actually dared doing something completely different. Um, I like that about Kiss. I like that about any band that really um, doesn't care too much about pleasing the fans, at least they didn't back then, um, and just uh, go ahead and do something completely different. I know it wasn't a favorite um, with Eric Carr, I can understand that, <laughs> you know, and um, it cost them dearly, to be fair, you know, that was one of the albums together with Unmasked probably, that um, uh, cost Kiss a lot of their hardcore uh, followers. Obviously, you know, that's all um, history. Um, there's tons of people that go and see Kiss these days. Um, so it's, it's all good, really. But it's just not, for me, music music uh, from the elder, I think it cost them quite dearly. On number 15, then, is Paul Stanley's solo album. I have to say, even though I rate Gene Simmons's solo album above it, um, it highlights what a great songwriter Paul Stanley is. I don't think I'm I'm alone in the um, in the opinion that um, Kiss really owes its longevity to Paul Stanley. He is the guy that holds it together, held it together for a long time, and I personally think that when you compare his songs to Gene's songs. Um, Kiss will may mostly be remembered for Paul's songs um, and his uh, stamp on Kiss. So I quite liked the solo album um, of Paul Stanley and uh, I put it at number 15 and then the, the album right above it on 14 is Gene Simmons' solo album. What I liked about it that it is quite eclectic without being corny if that makes sense. I mean, even when you wish upon a star that's on it, um, is, in a way, I find it is still somewhat sincere, and, you know, just trying to sing that song nicely, I, I get that. So I think of all the four albums, the solo albums, it is the best one, and it is on number 14. Um, number 13, Hot in the Shade. Um, like I said earlier, my... Uh, Personal favorite lineup of Kiss was uh, Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Bruce Kulick, and Eric Carr. And Hot in the Shade is an amazing album. I personally think it has no fillers. It's all great. And obviously, Forever is on it. What an awesome song that is. Um, you know, as time goes by, and knowing that, that Eric Carr died in 91, um, one could argue, yeah, you know, what's the last album you know, with Eric Carr and stuff, so so you, so one listens to it differently. I have to say I don't. Um, the reason why it ranks quite high is because it is a great album. And yes, absolutely, Eric Carr, you know, uh, is an awesome, was an awesome drummer. But um, the reason why I put it on 13 is simply because the songs on it are absolutely uh, great. I also found it very um, accessible. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm a European, so um, it had to me it had some sort of a European identity. The song the songs were radio friendly, 
and they would play it in Germany quite a bit. And um, if I'm not mistaken, it sold more in Europe and did better in Europe than it did, let's say, in the States. Um, so from that point of view, it's an album that I remember also because it, it had songs that were played uh, on the radio. And it's not that often that Kiss really had proper airplay um, on the radio. But um, Hot in the Shade is an absolutely awesome album. Um, and it gets hotter now on number 12, Hotter Than Hell. Um, Again, um, no fillers, great album from begin to finish, Hotter Than Hell on number 12. Um, number 11, Kiss, the first album, the very first album, um, simply because it doesn't launch them. I think, you know, the first, as we all know, the first three albums didn't quite uh, sell that well, but, you know, you can hear what Kiss did and what Kiss were about to become. It's all already um, audible on their first album. So um, on number uh, 11, Kiss. Okay, here's where um, people, you know, probably have a divided opinion. We're getting into the top 10 and my top 10, number 10, is um, uh, Dynasty. Um, I have to say, again, you know, when it came out, um, I was about 12, kind of thing. Uh, I Was Made For Loving You was a massive hit. I remember um, loving Charisma, a great song, um, you know, Sure No Something. It was very different. And I understand that, that when you are a Kiss fan, very Kiss fan, in the 70s, it took some adjusting to the pop Kiss, the new Kiss, or whatever, it was back then that they were, and remember, um, they were already as a man, as a band, quite fractured at that time. Um, so who knows what really went through their mind? But as an album, to this day, when I listen to it from 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 uh, beginning to end, uh, it is still enjoyable to listen to it. So it is in the top ten or number ten. Number nine uh, is Unmasked. <laughs> um, people go on about um, that it was only really um, successful in uh, Australia it's not really true when Shandy came out it was a massive hit in, in Germany and I remember being in my hometown Offenbach um, you know with, with other people my age and we were listening to the album um, on tape then uh, when we were out and about um, from finish to end and you know when you listen to it these days it is a little bit dated obviously you know and um, and there are some songs on it that that you know uh, when you listen to them you kind of think like oh not so sure but the reason why it is above Dynasty is because Kiss highlighted and showed really how well they fit in to that world of radio-friendly pop kind of thing, and um, I, I quite I quite like that, really. Um, so the album is there for me um, that high, uh, simply because I think the songs are a touch better than on the, on Dynasty. Um, I also love the whole concept of, of, of them being without makeup and then when they take the, the mask off, they still have the masked faces. So I, I quite liked the concept, the, um, the, um, the graphic novel kind of thing that they had going with it. Um, so it was very, very well done. Um, and I was a big fan when it came out. Uh, so that's Unmasked on 9. And then number 8, Crazy Nights. Um, Kiss were still struggling, I think, um, you know, quite quite a bit actually, from Unmasked onwards for, for quite a bit, even though uh, we're getting higher and some albums did very, very well. Um, but I remember um, when Kiss in, uh, I think, 88, they came to Germany and um, where, while Iron Maiden, not, not too many years before that, opened for them, they played um, during the day, you know, Crazy Nights during the day, um, in the rock circuit in, in Germany and they weren't quite as massive as they were but when I listen to Crazy Nights the whole album I absolutely love it and you know why it is very quirky number one it is very Kiss 
kiss as, as, as it was. Um, I think what I found was a was an established lineup by by the by eighty seven. Um, you know, Eric, Bruce, Paul, and Jean. Um, so I quite like that that album. I also like songs like um, you know uh, um, Reason to Live. I remember years ago Gene Simmons were saying the only time they would have um, keyboards on stage was to blow them up. <laughs> But again, when you look at it from a rock point of view, many of the really great rock bands had keyboardists. And, um, you know, and, and so I actually love that kind of light rock um, thing that sort of, you know, Bon Jovi had in, at, that, at that time. And remember, you know, it was, even though they had made enough money, you know, they are not <laughs> poor by any, by any standard. But um, I think it was um, a well, in, in a way it was a well calculated album because they needed to uh, probably break open into um, being very commercial or staying very commercial because again in Europe, um, I think the song that I'm most remembered for apart from the hardcore fans um, is probably I Was Made For Loving You. So um, Having Crazy Nights, which was rockier, but very um, typical Kiss, very positive. And so, so the album, I actually absolutely love it to this day. And then um, between number seven and six, it is interchangeable because I love both albums just the same. On number seven, I have Anim Animalize. Um, absolutely awesome, you know. Um, <coughs> what, a, what a great album that is. Um, um, Heavens on Fire is on it. Um, great vocals by Paul Stanley, absolutely awesome album, you know, it's great. Um, and just one above, number six, is Asylum. When Asylum came out, um, even though it had its pop moments, I quite liked it because to me it felt more raw, it felt harder in a way. And I quite like the rawness of Asylum, for want of a better word. So I think it's a great album. On number five, Rock and Roll Over, um, um, again, could be higher on the list. Um, again, I think this is an album where there's absolutely zero fillers. It's a great album. Um, it's just from the way I listen to music. Um, there's something about the way these albums were recorded back then, which is nobody's fault. And um, so even though the album is, is really great and perfect, Sonically, it's just not as great um, as the albums then became in the 80s. So when I listen to it, um, something has less strength. So um, that's probably the only reason why it isn't um, higher. So that's number five, Rock and Roll Over. Number four, Lick It Up. What an amazing album from start to finish. Absolutely incredible. Um, <coughs> I know Winnie Vincent didn't last long, um, but it is oftentimes the case when bands feel they have to prove something, they focus on who they truly are. And um, Kiss did that when they um, took off the makeup and then Lick It Up was the first album without the makeup. Um, it was just incredible. And again, I know um, they were they got lucky because, you know, bands, uh, bands, TV stations like MTV played it quite a bit. Um, so that helped uh, that album along, but when I listen to it, um, I love it. Interestingly enough, the song I like the most um, is not performed by them a lot, has not been a single, it's a million to one. It's my favorite album, my uh, favorite song on, on Lick It Up, which is my number four. Number three is Love Gun. Like I said, it was the first album I ever owned, um, and Love Gun is an incredible album from start to finish, also absolutely love the artwork. It's just uh, incredible. So Love Gun is on number three. Uh, number two is Destroyer, you know, obviously. <laughs> yes, it could be number one, um, but in my opinion, or, you know, the way I, um, the way I love Kiss, it's number two. Destroyer um, needs no introduction. It's, it's one of their best albums ever. Um, and the songs on it, Ghost Thunder, you know, um, and the likes, stood the test of time. But the number one album 
Kiss album for me is Creatures of the Night. And yes, it is a very uh, Eric Carr album. And I have to say, you know, um, he to me was the best trauma Kiss ever had. Um, when the album came out, um, I, I, I listened to it non-stop. Um, still, when I listen to it these days, I play it uh, on repeat a lot. It's such an incredible album. Um, even though it didn't do as well as Lick It Up, to me, if I had, if I could only own one album by Kiss, it would certainly be Creatures of the Night. So, um, whether you agree or not, there's not much I can do. Everybody has their own little um, take on things. Um, leave a comment. Uh, let me know, you know, what your first uh, choice would have been. And um, thanks. See you soon.